hi we are learning quadrature formulas to obtain an approximation to a given integral on a bounded interval a to b in this today we will learn a commonly used method called gaussian quadrature rule gaussian quadrature rule generally gives a better approximation to the integral a to b f of x dx when compared to the other quadrature rules that we have derived so far. Let us see how to get this better approximation. Well, if you recall the quadrature rules that we have derived so far are of this form where x naught x 1 up to x n are given to us. Once we are given the nodes then the unknowns are only the weights w naught w 1 up to w n right. In the last class we have seen that we can use a method called method of undetermined coefficients to obtain these weights. Of course, we can also obtain these weights by directly integrating the Lagrange polynomials in the interpolating polynomial of the function f of x right. But in the method of undetermined coefficients, we have an another approach to find these weights by imposing the condition that this quadrature rule finally gives us the exact value if the integrand f happens to be a polynomial of degree less than or equal to n. Right? So, this is what the condition we impose to get the weights. Once you impose this condition, this is equivalent to imposing the same condition on the corresponding monomial basis right that is what we did in the last class. In fact, it is possible to derive a quadrature formula in such a way that it gives us the exact value of the integral if the polynomial is of degree less than or equal to 2 n plus 1. Can you see how we can achieve this? Just think why we need to impose this condition that is why we need to impose that the quadrature formula gives us the exact result for polynomials of degree less than or equal to n. Because in that way you have n plus 1 elements in the monomial basis and here also you have n plus 1 unknowns right. So, that is how we are matching the number of unknowns with the number of equations in the system and getting a closed system of equations. Now, if you understand this logic, then you can understand how to get this condition on our quadrature formula. That is, we now want our quadrature formula to be exact for polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2 n plus 1. How can we achieve that? Well, why you have to fix the nodes? You also consider the nodes to be unknowns. That is the idea behind getting this condition. So, now we will not fix the nodes, but we will also obtain the nodes as well as the weights. In that way, how many unknowns are there? Just think about that you have n plus 1 unknowns coming from the weights and you have n plus 1 unknowns coming from the set of nodes. right? In that way, you have 2 n plus 2 unknowns. Therefore, you can impose the condition that the quadrature formula will be exact for polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2 n plus 1. In that way, the corresponding monomial basis will have 2 n plus 2 2 elements in it, they are 1 x x square up to x to the power of 2 n plus 1, right. There are 2 n plus 2 elements in the basis and that can lead to a system of equations having 2 n plus 2 equations. You have 2 n plus 2 unknowns, therefore, there is a scope to solve this system to get all these unknowns. So, that is the basic idea of this improved version and that is called the Gaussian quadrature rule. Let us make it more precise. You want to evaluate this integral. 
For that, you are using this quadrature rule, which can give us an approximate value to this integral. Now, in this process, what are all the unknowns that we have to choose? Well, we have to choose all the weights. They are not given to us, but we have to obtain them. And also now, we have to obtain all the nodes. Previously, nodes are given to us, but now we are not going to take the nodes as per our choice, but we will also obtain these nodes as the part of the method. Therefore, you have 2 n plus 2 unknowns. We have to impose the condition that this quadrature formula will be exact, that is it gives you the exact value of the integral as long as the integrand f is a polynomial of degree now less than or equal to 2 n plus 1, 1 less because your monomial basis will have 1 x up to say if your polynomial degree is n then it goes up to n therefore, you have n plus 1 right. So, if you are going up to 2 n plus 1 then it has 2 n plus 2 members and therefore, you will get 2 n plus 2 equations. On the other hand, you have 2 n plus 2 unknowns. Therefore, you can solve this system to get these unknowns. That is the idea. Remember, in order to keep our calculations simple, we will impose this idea on the integral minus 1 to 1. Remember, our aim is to find a quadrature rule for the integral a to b f of x dx for any a less than b, right. But in this calculation, we will always restrict ourselves to the interval minus 1 to 1. Keep this in mind. We will first derive the formulas. Once you have the formula for this integral, that is integral over minus 1 to 1, then we can use certain transformation to get the integral over any given interval a to b. That is the idea. This restriction is purely because our calculations will become relatively simple in this case. That is why we are doing this. So, let us try to derive the Gaussian rules for the integral minus 1 to 1 f of x dx. Later, we will transform it to any integral a to b f of x dx. Let us keep this restriction in mind and go ahead. So, what we are going to do is we want to evaluate this integral and we want our quadrature rule in this form. We will assume that this quadrature rule gives exact value if the integrand f happens to be a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 n plus 1 that is equivalent to imposing this condition on the monomial basis only. That is, we will impose the condition that this quadrature formula is exact for the integrands 1 x x square up to x to the power of 2 n plus 1. So, that is the final condition that we will be imposing. Right? Now, you see you choose a n that is all. Do not go to choose the nodes. Different n leads to different quadrature rules. n equal to 0 will give you a quadrature rule for n equal to 0 and similarly n equal to 1 gives a quadrature rule, n equal to 2 gives a quadrature rule like that. As you go on increasing the values of n, you in fact get a better and better approximation to your integral. All these methods are called Gaussian quadrature rules only. Let us try to derive the quadrature rule for n is equal to 0. Remember, this is the general form of the quadrature rule and we want to take n is equal to 0 here. right? In that way, our quadrature rule will look like this and what is the condition that we have to impose now? Well, we have to impose that this is exactly equal to that is what I am writing here. The quadrature rule if the integrand f happens to be a polynomial of degree 2 n plus 1, right? n is equal to 0, therefore, it is 
polynomial of degree less than or equal to 1. That gives us two elements in the corresponding monomial basis that is 1 and x. Therefore, you have to get the weight w naught and the node x naught by imposing the condition that the quadrature formula gives exact value if f is equal to 1 that is this and f is equal to x that gives us this expression. Now, from here you can get a pair of equations each coming from these conditions. You see now we do not have a linear system because the unknowns are x naught and x 1 and they are not appearing linearly in this equation. Therefore, in the Gaussian quadrature rule what you get is finally, a nonlinear system of equations that is one level difficult in the case of Gaussian rules when compared to the quadrature rules that we derived in the previous idea. Right? There we are given the nodes therefore, the unknowns are only w's and in that way it gives us a system of linear equation, but that is not the case here you will get nonlinear system of equations. But in the present case, it is very easy to solve this nonlinear system. In fact, you can easily check that it leads to w naught equal to 2 and x naught equal to 0, and in that way, the quadrature rule finally reduces to this expression. So, what it says is the Gaussian rule for n is equal to 0 for the integral minus 1 to 1 f of x dx. Remember, this is a particular case only minus 1 to 1 f of x dx is given like this. If you recall, we have come across this method already in one of our previous classes. What is that? Well, you can go back and see that this is what precisely we called as the midpoint rule. Remember, the midpoint rule is b minus a into f of the midpoint of the interval a plus b by 2 right in the present case the midpoint is 0 so that is what is this and b minus a is precisely 2 here in this particular integral minus 1 to 1 right therefore what you get as the gaussian rule for n equal to 0 is precisely the midpoint rule that is what is interesting here let us go to the next case now, we will take n equal to 1 and see how the Gaussian rule with n equal to 1 looks like. Again, in this case, we have to take our general quadrature rule and put n is equal to 1 in that to get this expression. So, this is the general form of the quadrature rule that we are interested in the present case. Here, we have to obtain the weights w naught w 1 and also the nodes x naught and x 1. right? Therefore, you have to impose the condition that your quadrature formula will be exact for all polynomials of degree less than or equal to 3. Therefore, your monomial basis will now contains the elements 1, x, x square and x cube. For each, we will get a nonlinear equation let us see how it comes. When you take f of x identically equal to 1, you get this equation. When f of x equal to x, you get this equation. f of x equal to x square, you get this equation. And finally, f of x equal to x cube gives you this equation. You can see that you have four equations. It is a system of nonlinear equations and you somehow have to solve this system you can see that w naught equal to w 1 equal to 1 and x naught equal to minus 1 by root 3 and x 1 equal to 1 by root 3 will solve this system of nonlinear equations. Therefore, the Gaussian rule with n is equal to 1 is given by this formula. Now, as you go on increasing n, the number of nonlinear equations will also increase in your system and also 
their expressions are quite complicated and thereby solving their system of nonlinear equations will also become more difficult. One can go for certain nonlinear solvers like Newton's method and so on, but we will not give any weightage for such problems. We will just stop our derivation of Gaussian rules only up to n is equal to 1. However, we will just give an idea of how to go about with n equal to 2, 3 and so on in general for n. In general, we need to obtain the weights and the nodes such that you can approximate the integral minus 1 to 1 f of x dx by this quadrature formula. For that, we have to impose the condition that this quadrature formula will be exact for polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2 n plus 1, right? because we have 2 n plus 2 unknowns in our problem. Okay? So, those nonlinear systems in general are given by this expression and therefore, you have to solve this nonlinear system that is a quite difficult task. And once you solve this nonlinear system and get the weights and the nodes, then you have the Gaussian rule for that given n. Okay? So, n equal to 2, 3 and so on, one can go on deriving, but we will not give any weightage in our course. We will only restrict ourselves to n is equal to 0 and n is equal to 1 in our course. But the idea should be clear how to go for higher values of n. Well, we have derived the Gaussian rule so far only for those integrals over the interval minus 1 to 1. Right? Now, let us see how to generalize it to any given interval a to b. This can be achieved by this simple change of variable formula that can take the interval minus 1 to 1 to any interval a to b. Right. So, you just have to impose this change of variable into your integral. You are interested in finding the integral a to b f of x dx, but you have the Gaussian rule only for integral minus 1 to 1. Right. That is, you have only the Gaussian rule defined for this kind of integrals, that is integral over minus 1 to 1 but that is not a serious problem because you can write this integral a to b f of x dx as b minus a by 2 into the integral that is comfortable for us to apply the Gaussian rule. Right? Now, remember if you want to evaluate an approximate value of this integral, you should not put the Gaussian rule for this f but you have to put the Gaussian rule for this function. That is the only extra information that you have to remember when you are applying Gaussian rule on any integral a to b f of x dx. Students make this mistake quite often. They just take this f and apply the Gaussian quadrature rule for this f only. You should not do that you should apply it to this integrand. Okay? Therefore, the Gaussian quadrature rule should be applied to this integral and then you multiply it with this number in order to get an approximate value of this integral using Gaussian rule. That is one extra work you have to do. You should not forget that. Let us try to evaluate the integral 0 to 1, 1 by 1 plus x dx. Remember, our integral is not over minus 1 to 1. Therefore, you first have to carefully use the change of variable which we have shown in this slide and obtain this function okay, with a equal to 0 and b equal to 1 now and then apply the Gaussian rule. Okay. So, in the present case, the change of variable happens to be x equal to t plus 1 by 2. Therefore, this is the given integral and that should be now rewritten in this form and then apply the Gaussian quadrature rule for this integral. Remember that is what I am just emphasizing. Do not apply the Gaussian quadrature rule for this integral. This is wrong. 
okay you apply the gaussian quadrature rule for this integral so that is you use this formula this is the gaussian quadrature rule for n equal to 1 similarly for n equal to 0 also you can do what is f now f is not the one which is given to us but f is the one which you obtained after putting the change of variable right that is 1 by t plus 3 and that gives you this value okay so this one transformation that you have to do without forgetting and that is very important you see what is the mathematical error involved in this uh, calculation it is something given like this well again i am give you a caution that although i am calling it as mathematical error ideally it is actually the total error okay let us see how the mathematical error estimate looks like we can obtain an estimate in the case of Gaussian rule. Let us assume that f is a continuous function defined on an interval a to b and you have some n and you also obtain the Gaussian rule for that given n. Then the mathematical error involved in the Gaussian rule with that n is denoted by m e n of f and you can estimate the mathematical error by this inequality okay where this rho is nothing but the infimum over all degrees q less than or equal to 2n plus 1 infinite norm of f minus q remember you should go back to our previous classes and see what this infinite norm means it is nothing but maximum over mod f of x minus q of x right uh, x belongs to the interval a to b that is what is meant by this notation and we call it as maximum norm or infinite norm okay so what you are doing is you are taking all the polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2n plus 1 and obtaining the maximum norm of that minus f and then taking the infimum over all those numbers and that is what is called as rho 2 n plus 1 of f and the upper bound of the mathematical error involved in the Gaussian quadrature rule is given like this. Let us see how to prove this it is not very difficult assume that the infimum is achieved at some polynomial which is denoted by q star 2 n plus 1 it is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 n plus 1 right then rho 2 n plus 1 of f is precisely equal to this because infimum of this is what is the definition of rho and we are taking that infimum to be achieved at q star right therefore if you take the infinite norm of f minus q star that will be exactly equal to this number right that is by definition and now look at the mathematical error of f you can see that the mathematical error involved in the Gaussian quadrature rule in evaluating the integral of f is written like this why it is so because this is actually equal to 0 because by the derivation Gaussian quadrature rule gives you the exact value for all polynomials of degree 2 n plus 1 right and q star is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 n plus 1 therefore Gaussian quadrature rule gives you the exact integral value that means the mathematical error involved in the value obtained from the Gaussian quadrature rule for q star is exactly equal to 0 right. So, what I am doing is precisely the mathematical error in f is equal to the mathematical error in f minus 0 that is all I am putting I am not putting anything extra here right. Therefore, this is always true. Now, you just check that the mathematical error involved in the Gaussian quadrature rule for the integrand f plus g is nothing but 
the mathematical error involved in the Gaussian quadrature rule with integrand f plus the mathematical error with integrand g. Okay. So, this is very simple to check, it comes directly from the linear property of the integral in fact. Right? Now, I will use this simple property in this expression and that tells me that I can write this expression like this. Right? So, I am just having this of course, with a minus sign here and that I am writing like this with a minus sign here. That is what I am doing and now we can see that the mathematical error in f minus q star can be written like this. This is precisely the definition of the mathematical error. This is the exact value minus the quadrature rule that is the Gaussian quadrature rule is this. So, this is exact value and this is the approximate value. So, that is the mathematical error. right? Now, let us take the modulus on both sides and use the triangle inequality for the modulus and then take the maximum norm on this integrand. I am doing all this in one step. You can see that the right hand side in fact can be written like this after taking a modulus with a less than or equal to sign. Okay. So, you are just dominating modulus of this by this quantity. You can easily check this. What I am doing? I am just taking the modulus and using the triangle inequality for the modulus and I am also using the condition that a to b f of x dx modulus is less than or equal to a to b mod f of x dx. This is also a property that is well known for the integrals. I am using that also here. I am first taking modulus here and then pushing this modulus inside the integral and then dominating this term by its maximum. That is how I am having the maximum norm here. And then what remains is integral a to b dx, right? That is nothing but b minus a. And you can also see that this term can be dominated by this. That is not a difficult thing. Of course, you take the modulus and then take the modulus inside the summation, okay? And then you get this. I hope you can do this to this without any problem. And now you can see that all these weights with the modulus will sum to the length of the interval b minus a. So, that is what is very interesting. Once you put this into this term, you will see that you will get back the inequality that we want to prove. Remember, this is what we have taken as rho 2 n plus 1, right? and this will be another b minus a. Therefore, b minus a plus b minus a will be 2 times b minus a. That is what precisely we want to show and this gives us an estimate of the mathematical error involved in the Gaussian quadrature rule. With this, we will end our class. Thank you for your attention.